Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour, buongiorno, annyeonghaseyo, aloha, kakahakia. Welcome back to the vlog. So stoked that I get to share something different with you today. If you recall from the last video, I believe, or two days ago, we drove by some World War II airplanes that were, um, what do you call them, parked here in the airfield next to where we live. And this morning we are going to go, uh, I guess, watch an air show. Kinda. Kind of. <laughs> Before they go, they're leaving today or tomorrow? They're leaving Wednesday. Okay, they're leaving Wednesday, but obviously my husband works crazy hours during the week, which is why we are going today. So happy I get to share this with you. This is one of the perks of living in a military base. We get to see really cool stuff like World War II memorabilia, or what would you call these? World War II aircraft, uh, Warbirds. Warbirds, yeah, but not not that. I'm talking about things that belong to history, artifacts, relic, um, yeah, but that's it. <laughs> Relics. There we go. Bilingual brain. <laughs>
Okay, we're home. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Unfortunately, being out in the sun for an hour and a half gave me a migraine. I don't want to say migraine yet. It's just, it's pounding right here. Like right here, it's pounding. And I already took two acetaminophen. I put some peppermint oil right there on my temple. The reason I really turn on the camera right now is because I want to share with you this headache hat. I've been calling it my migraine cap, but this is what I use. It looks like this. I just keep it in the freezer. It brings this fleece cover so that the cold doesn't burn your ears. I left my selfie stick in the car, so let me see how I'm gonna show you. Oh, that works. It props you up on these knobs. <laughs> anyway, you put the fleece side on your head. I highly recommend putting the Velcro on the top of your head as opposed to the bottom because um, it'll get caught on your hair. So make sure to apply some pressure. Pressure helps. And there you go. It looks super funny, but it's not like you're going out with it. Oh, just leave it there. It's pounding. It hurts so much. I know it was the sun, so I'm just attacking this before it gets any worse. Anyway, you put your hair up in a bun so it doesn't get caught in the bottom. It doesn't get caught in the Velcro. Just leave it on for a few minutes. I'll check in with you later. Well, it's been a few hours, obviously. It's nighttime. I'm in my comfy clothes and everything. Migraine or pounding headache is gone. So the migraine hat, the migraine cap or headache hat, however you want to call it, worked. It, everything worked out fine. We actually had another outing after I last recorded, but it was just something really quick, so I didn't even bother. Since we got home, I've just been working on planning my classes for tomorrow. I also worked on a schedule that people can follow uh, for those who still want to sign up with me for homework, help, tutoring, things like that. I'm gonna show it to you because I'm actually kind of proud of what I did. I created this schedule. So people can see this is my time that's blocked out. It's my non-negotiable time. It's my lunch hour, which you know, because of my health, I, I really can't skip that time. And then there's the evening period that I'm also not negotiating, but that's more because of my life with my husband, you know, his really crazy schedule of the time he gets out or doesn't get out or oh whatever. It just gets so complicated. I don't even want to try to commit to somebody and then have to cancel plans or shift things around. So that I just I blocked it off. Then I gave myself another hour after lunchtime for things that I have to do here, whether it's phone calls or something in the house or I don't know, talk to somebody, whatever. It's just my miscellaneous time after lunch. Then of course I need my planning period, which is something that a lot of people don't see when you think about teaching. It's not just showing up to the classroom, which I've actually talked about before. Uh, it's not just showing up to the classroom and say, well, today we're gonna learn about this. No, you gotta take time to sit down, go through your materials. Sometimes you have to do some research online. You prepare your photocopies, you go by the, by the guidelines and you got to follow the standards. So that also takes time. I separated that. Obviously in the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, you got to devote it to planning your week. Then these are the different students that I have. I've got one in Puerto Rico. Hopefully next month I'll have some in Minneapolis. And then this is my homework help block where I only have one student so far. But with this schedule, people can see, well, she's got some more slots open and they can just sign up if they want to. The other thing I worked on was a translation flyer. I still have to work on my rates table because I keep getting uh, questions about how much I charge per language, per word, per page, etc. So I created a flyer of uh, the languages I work with as well as my areas of expertise, turnaround time, um, my contact information and everything. But like I said, I still got to work on that uh, rates table. That was something else I worked on um, other than planning my classes for tomorrow. Tomorrow I have one student who does English, Spanish, and math with me in the morning. Then I have that one student for homework help uh, at three in the afternoon. Other than that, I still, I'm doing research, trying to find some, uh, I have the words in Spanish and in French, not in English, <laughs> books for teaching Spanish and English because I have quite a few for French. 
but not necessarily for Spanish and English as a foreign language or as a second language. I can't finish that research tonight though, and here's why I turn on the camera. I gotta share some chronic illness, Crohn's, autoimmune stuff with you. Do not mind the hair. This is how terrible I feel right now. My tongue is really uncomfortable right now. It doesn't burn and it doesn't hurt. It, it's actually pretty numb, but the numbness is what really feels awful. Because I'm also a little bloated, as you can see. When, when my belly sticks out further than my chest, yeah, I know I'm bloated. So right now, with my tongue and my belly hurting when I move, I'm kind of thinking this is my IBD acting up, not necessarily flaring, but to be on the safe side, I told my husband, uh, I'm done for today. I'm going to lie down on the couch, relax, kind of detach and disconnect before bed. So when I go to bed, it's just sleep and nothing else you don't have all that stuff going in your head of oh did i miss something what do i have to do tomorrow just do your list for the next day make sure you don't forget anything for later <laughs> i don't know what's up with my hair hey parenthesis does your hair do this if you wear glasses i don't know why i get loops around my ears it's so strange it never happened to me before i'm thinking it's this kind of glasses like the frame Anyway, close parenthesis, uh, do your list for the next day. Just don't think about anything. Something I really value from my mom, something she taught me was that when you're sleeping, you can't solve anything. You're When you're sleeping, you're in bed with your eyes closed. So you're not gonna solve a problem. You're not gonna work on anything. You're not gonna get up and do something. Bedtime is bedtime. So for me to take advantage of bedtime, sleep time, recharge your batteries time, I don't do anything before bed. My tongue is really bothering me right now. And do something that really makes my brain happy before I put my head on the pillow. Let's hope tomorrow we wake up symptom free and ready for the day, ready for the week. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. I think we should start saying our goodbyes in different languages. So let's see if we can do this right. Um, instead of saying good evening, like when you're greeting somebody, hello, hey, good evening, you're gonna say good night because it's the end. So good night, buena noche, buena nuit, buena noche. I have no idea in Korean, and I should look that up in Hawaiian. See, this is why you practice things out loud. I owe you that for tomorrow. Have a good night, guys.